So, yeah, survey in this area. And, of course, there's a chapter page right here. A sense of familiarity overcomes her as the chapter page comes to her finger. So does the realization that Roberto's spirit is aiding her. A war to end all wars. Oh, goodness, this is a fun one. So, yeah, this one's going to be a fun one. What does this look like? What does this look like? The Black Guardian grows restless. Oh age. dear. Its hunger increases, and the binding continues to weaken. We feed it flesh, but I fear it will not guard the relic too much longer. There is no choice in the matter. Nope. It must remain and guard the artifact until the time of planetary alignment. After that, the Guardian may return to its lair. Yep. Our master does not like failure. Nope. It is I wouldn't think so. To keep the binding intact. Then we have to find more flesh and bone. Well, that won't be too hard. Okay. Alright. And war to end our wars. You. The war to end all wars redefined how mankind looked at war and the value of human life. Over 19,000 men lost their lives every day in the trenches of the Somme. Hey, some say yep. uselessly, some invoke a higher cause. I read accounts of the slaughter from many journalists who spent time in the trenches, but I found the account of a certain Peter Jacob to be the most horrible of all. His implication about the ancients' involvement with the war was hideous and so obvious. Yay. With the horror of the Battle of the Somme scant miles away and the distant echoes of pounding artillery, Ugh. a young journalist named Peter Jacob researched his latest story from the front lines. Yep. His grim task brought him to Oublier yep. Cathedral, now transformed into a field we hospital. We already know what's going to happen now. We already know where this is heading. I find no solace in the purpose behind all the senseless violence that surrounds me. Young men die at a rate unheard of in centuries of warfare. Shelling, machine guns, mustard gas, rip, pierce, burn to flesh. Men so gauze in their own urine to stop the insidious gas. Yep. The hospitals here cannot cope. Well, doesn't look like he's being taken off to be treated. Looks like he's being taken off to, uh, be killed by the Guardian. A soldier's letter lies on the table waiting to be sent home. Pick up. Oh, well, that's not what I was gonna do. Check. First letter from Private Reginald Jackson to his love, Margaret. I was admitted to this hospital on Tuesday. The damage caused to my legs was slight, but there was no way that I could ever walk normally again. I hate this place. Every day I am reminded that I will never be able to do the things I love. The hospital is a very strange place. Converted from an old cathedral, there is an odd atmosphere around it. Silent, but for the words of the wounded calling out in the night, there is no doubt that it is haunted. What I find most odd in this place is that you never see anyone leave during the day. It's not right. No goodbyes or farewells. Just an empty bed when you wake. Oh, there's a guy. The guard shifts about, obviously bored with his duty awaiting replacement or perhaps call to arms. Such a thing will not come quite yet. S stacked deeply in the landing, crates of medical supplies await you. Stereots of morphine bandages, tourniquets and anesthetics, the list goes on and on. What does she have to say? With the motherly voice, the nurse advises Peter to get some rest. Okay. 
These are corpses. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe they're corpses, I don't quite remember. A soldier's letter lies atop the crate of medical supplies. Oh. A second letter from Peter, or Peter, Private Reginald Jackson's to his love, Margaret. There's been some co- I've been here for over a week now, and there's no, still no word when I'll be allowed to leave. Strange things have happened. At night, the sounds of the hospital changes. Echoes of voices that don't belong to anyone haunt the walls and corridors. The restless ghosts, perhaps, or per or sounds of movement or whispers. I've seen war firsthand, and the sounds at night in the hospital scare me more than I ever thought possible. What is going on here at night? Why do I feel so threatened? My fears are worsened by the task of other f t by the talk of the other f young soldiers. One said they had heard cries for help in the middle of the night, cries that were only answered by snarls of rage and not compassion. Another said Lance Corporal Haskell and had not been discharged but had gone missing. I stare at his empty bed with a sense of unholy dread gnawing at my heart. Okay, nothing up here. Just came up here for a letter, I suppose. That was it. Peter actually will run for a good amount of time, so he's not so bad as a character. Like, he does pretty okay. Perhaps just chill out for a little bit. The faint sound of moaning emanates from behind the limb and veils, whispered utterances, frantic prayers to loved ones, words offered only by the face of mortality. Blah blah blah. The, the mother. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Talk. The soldier is rather distressed. Perhaps he has lost a lot of friends in the trench. The song he confides only stories or sad ones, and the only true heroes are in the mortuary. Blah. Okay. I see that. Sealed envelope. Well, let's open that. Soldier's orders. Cool. Okay, so that's gonna be to get that one guy out of here. So I can go in that room. I don't know why I tried to punch it. I'm so used to the A button being the button that you go to. I see you over there. Well, I see you to both the 8 point star, though, or the 8 point spell over there and to this guy. The soul, the guard frowns, ushers Pito away from the organ, he explains that the one of the few antiques in the region that has so far survived the war and that he's alive, he will remain intact. While he, while he is alive, he will remain intact. Hello, I also see you here. Guard quietly but strongly points out that the area is off limits to civilians. guard down there who's probably gonna say oh hey you can't be down here and also let me look to see yeah that is indeed an eight point spell required which I cannot do obviously I don't even have the tome so I can't do anything I am useless so so useless Alright, what will be fun is that I get to give you these. Oh, hold on. An official note from the Army Regulation Stationery. The note reads, Private Thompson, by order of Lieutenant Hargraves, on behalf of H.R.H. George V. You, George V. or George V? I don't know. 
You are to leave your post of duty and rally the street, rally in the street outside the Ubiak Cathedral. Further orders will be presented at the rallying point. God save the king. The guard unfolds the orders and begins to read them before exclaiming. <laughs> Okay, so I know what it's trying to say. It's trying to say bloody hell, but this is in such like a British accent that it goes bloody hell, lad. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Bloody hell. Bloody hell. Oh, that's so funny. But I, <laughs> I can't even read it. We must be on the offensive. Following the orders, he takes leave of his post. Wow. Just wow. Stacks, stacked like logs, Peter stands before the price of human war, the bloodied corpses of young men who have made the ultimate sacrifice to defend their own countries and those of others. It's a gun. A revolver lies abandoned on a nearby pew. Should Peter pick the revolver up? Yes. And by doing so, the power goes out. Okay. And now... Yep. <laughs> Y'all know what's happening now. And our last one to appear is Bianchi. Well, our latest one to appear, rather, not last. Because the last one to appear, we should know who that is by now, but just in case, I'm not going to say it. 